to start in pretty much the middle. Yeah, so you want to start in the middle of the middle. Thank you. Any folks that want to do that? Um, the number of the players that we have on here, we have four people. We have uh, four back row. Hillsman Howard and Willie Mays are going to do it. Any other folks? <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, it's, it's actually open to all the front row folks, uh, but I will announce that when Tyler comes up. Uh, so pretty much until the until this year the players get done. So it's usually about a minute or so. right over here. All right. Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2018 NCAA Tournament West Regional at Spokane Arena. A couple quick reminders before we get started. Please turn your cell phones to silent. And remember, flash photography is not allowed during the news conference. At this time, the Texas A&M locker room is open to media members and remain, will remain open until the conclusion of the student athlete news conference. We are joined now by Texas A&M head coach Gary Blair, and will later be joined by student athletes Kyla Hillsman, Anriel Howard, and Danny Williams. Do we have any questions for coach? Robert Suss of the Bryan College Station Eagle. Uh, Gary, you faced a lot of good, potent inside games in the SEC and non-conference. Where, where, does, where does Notre Dame rank, and how do you c combat that? There's not anybody in the SEC that's like Shepard. I can go from past experiences. My last year at Arkansas, Stacy Stevens, who played for Texas, that they went on to the Final Four, was very similar. And if you can help me with this name, the girl that used to play for Nebraska, that's in the WNBA now. I'm trying to think of her name, uh, Kelsey or something like that. Uh, but she was also a very versatile post player, just like Shepard is. Shepard is not the perimeter post player that we faced at DePaul or at Drake. So it's a different set. She's going to take you to the low block. They run a great 1-4 high set that they isolate her down low. She's a very good passer. Uh, she's a complete package. And if I could go back to years ago, yeah, most of you guys are too young. Leslie Johnson, who used to play at Purdue, was uh, that type of player. I've had uh, other players, Andrew, Andy Norris at Stephen F. Austin, a uh, player similar to that, a uh, little bit of Daniel Adams. She's a completely different thing than we faced when we faced McGowan of Mississippi State, Russell of Tennessee, Asia Wilson, or even Coates last year of South Carolina. She's a very physical player that loves to duck her shoulder and she draws fouls very well. And they do a good job of managing her time, taking her out to rest. 
to send her back in because uh, they do not have a lot of debt. So Muffet has done a good job managing a short, short bench this year by keeping people fresh and also learning to play heavy minutes. I think we've done that for two straight years. Uh, people talk about Notre Dame's four ACLs, but uh, I've got four kids out too that nobody's ever written a story about. I've got two kids that are out red-shirted the whole year because of injuries, and then I've got two McDonald All-Americans sitting out because of the one-year transfer. So I've got four kids out as well. It's a shame for her four ACLs. That's just unheard of. I don't think I've ever heard of four in one year. But uh, they've overcome it. They're playing very well. Uh, if you go back and look at our last four games, Mississippi State was averaging 83 points a game. Drake was averaging 82.5. DePaul was averaging 83. Now we've got Notre Dame averaging 85 and shooting 51%. Where are all the defensive teams that I'd love to face that are slowing it down? So we just keep facing great, great offensive teams. Coach, did you envision the – right here. Did you envision the type of year that uh, Kennedy Carter has had? You dream about it, but how many can expect the Kelsey Plum, the Kelsey Mitchell, the Delano DeShields, the Asia Durr? They're all that heralded coming out. But can they do it under the Big Ten? Can they do it against the pressure that defenses, the different schemes that people will play at you, the triangle and twos, the box and ones, the denial back? She's overcome all of it. And a lot of this has come from she played for the, for the state championship last year. She fouled out about a minute to go, and they ended up losing. She played for the gold medal against Russia this summer, was the, the leading scorer on that team as a two guard. And the year before, she won the gold medal. So this isn't just a kid just slipping in through the cracks. This is the most highly recruited kid that we've ever had since probably Kelsey Bone played for us when, but remember, she transferred from South Carolina after a year to come home. So, but Kennedy, her basketball IQ is off the charts. Sometimes you, when you rec when you're coaching a point guard, it's a love-hate relationship sometimes until they get on the same page as you as a coach. And that's hard for an 18-year-old. I couldn't even get my own two kids when they were 18 to be on the same page with me and I was a parent. And so you have to have a give and take. Being an old school guy, I cannot go in and talk about John Stockton and Carl Malone on the pick and roll and all that type of stuff. She'll know who they are, but most of my other kids will not know who Malone and Stockton are. So you have got to adjust as a head coach. You've got to let a kid feel her way. Sometimes as a coach, don't go in and overcoach and take away what she does best, and that's be able to create her own shot, which the majority of the guards at her age cannot do. They're situational players or they have to grow until they learn how to handle and think and react and, and do all those things. But she can do it all. I'd like to take all that credit, but I can't. It, uh, actually, she was coached in high school by one of my former assistants who was with me at Arkansas and Stephen F. Her dad did a great job of uh, working with her on her handles and everything like that. And her mom has done a tremendous job of raising that young lady, being with her on the discipline parts that you have to have. Coach John Wilson with KBTX TV. When you saw that Notre Dame would be the Sweet 16 matchup, did you think back to 2011? I think back to 2011. Every day I look at my right hand. 
but I'm not looking at Notre Dame. I'm looking at Stanford. I'm looking at Baylor. I'm looking at Georgia, and I'm looking at Notre Dame. A team that was not a Cinderella team, a team that played well, that defeated a lot of number ones and twos to win that thing. But when you win it, it comes so few and far between. You better enjoy it. Our football team is still enjoying 1939 when they won it, okay? It's hard to do. When I was at Arkansas, Nolan Richardson won it in 94 by beating Duke. They're still enjoying it. And then the next year he loses it to uh, Coast to Coast because of Dabney goes Coast to Coast on a, on a basket for UCLA and win it. You better enjoy it. Yes, I think about it every day, but I don't think about the game itself. And to be honest, I have never seen the complete game after the fact. I've only seen the highlights because it was time to turn the page and start thinking about next year's team. One of these days, whenever I do retire, I'll sit back and I'll watch that whole game and enjoy every single minute of it with a beverage or three. Uh, Ryan McDonald from the Battalion Student Newspaper. Last game uh, in the first half, you guys really found yourself in a hole. How do you, and you used Kennedy Carter's 32 point second half to get, get out of that uh, just barely. So how are you going to get your girls going early in the first half so there's no hole and no performance needed like that to win the game? You gotta make shots. We had good shots in the first half. It wasn't what the Paul was doing to us. It was what we were not doing to ourselves to execute. Kennedy was two for nine, and Danny was one for eight, and Kyla was one for three, and Jazz Lumpkin didn't score at all. Andrew Howard kept us in that ball game with her heart, with her rebounding, with her putbacks, and sometimes you have to have a different person step up every night. And I've got a team, uh, everybody wants to talk about Kennedy Carter. I've got a team of stars, okay? It's a friggin' galaxy out there. And I don't know which one is going to shine the most that day. Will it be Jazz Lumpkin's defense and rebounded? Or will it be Hillsman uh, ruling the paint? But uh, unfortunately in this business, you all have got to write about the story. The story right now is Texas A&M in the Sweet 16, and I've got the best freshman in the country. But I've got a pretty damn good team that goes along with it very similar to 2011 when everybody wanted to talk about Daniel Adams. They needed to talk about Colson and Carter and Tyra White and Adora Lanu because those were very good players. And you know what's funny? All those kids are still playing pro ball seven years later. So there was a lot of stars on that team just like there is here as well. So we're not going to get off to that bad of a start again, I hope. I hope, but I appreciate you guys coming out and covering it for the student newspaper. I really appreciate that. Gary, first time for all these players to be in the Sweet 16. What do you see from them to be able to handle maybe off the field, and you know, off the court, and get ready for the spotlight? As you mentioned, it's a little bit bigger this week than last week. Well, due to social media, those kids are in it every day, okay? Even in 2011, it was nothing compared to today. The stuff that's going up on Instagram or Instant Chat or whatever you, you guys do, I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand it. The thing that the SEC is putting together, the, the Players' Tribune thing that just came out on Kennedy, an interview with her, the thing in the Spokane paper was very good. Uh, this morning talking about four great players and Andrew Howard was mentioned as our great player right there. All that stuff is, is tremendous. Okay, this is where we're going. We're standing on our own two feet. You people here in the audience, y'all want to be here. This was not an assignment that you had to cover. You want to be here to cover women's basketball, and this is what makes this game so special. It keeps growing and growing and getting better and better. 
and I'm just lucky to still be doing it. And I'm getting to go against a Hall of Famer in Muffet. She's done so much for the game. She's coach of the year this year with uh, six players. She's been doing one heck of a job. So I really admire what Muffet is giving back to the game. She's former WBCA president. Last week I faced another former WBCA president. And uh, it's just good to be here back in the Northwest. The last time I was here was in about 1990 at an AAU tournament. Okay, and I got to learn how your golf courses were. And I played 36 at Spokane Country Club. I recruited hard, went over to Coeur d'Alene to play, and it was a great time. But usually we're over on the other side of the mountain range in Seattle, which is also a beautiful town. One of my favorite towns is Seattle. But after eating at the Italian kitchen last night, that was pretty good too. Do we have any more questions for Coach? Last one over here. Coach, what do you see as keys to the game tomorrow? Two keys. Shepard and Hillsman. Both of them need to stay out of foul trouble. How is the game going to be called? The DePaul game, the refs let the kids decide it. And it was a very well-called ball game by veteran officials that didn't try to overcall. And I think once you get to the NCAA tournament, you got to let your bigs play a little. You got to let your bigs play a little. And because I think that's going to be important. The other thing is, who's going to do what? Are we going to see the triangle on two? Are we going to see the zone? Or we're going to see the man that she played against uh, Villanova because she had to because Villanova's own offense is about as good as there's anybody in the country. So she had to play man. And because she knew she had the better team, and eventually it would work out like it did in the second half. Their guards are outstanding. NCAA games are won with your guards. Post players set the tone and everything like that. But you win championships, you win everything at the guard position. And I believe we've got three or four pretty good ones there, and I know she does as well. All right, thank you for your time, Coach Blair. Thank you. Just a quick reminder, uh, Media Services will be sending out quotes approximately 20 minutes after the student athlete news conferences.
right? We are now joined by Kyla Hillsman, Andrea Howard, and Danny Williams. A couple quick reminders before we get started. Please turn your cell phones to silent. And remember, flash photography is not allowed during the news conference. The Texas A&M 90-minute practice will begin at 1.10. The court will be open to members of the media for the first 15 minutes of practice, after which time the court will be cleared and practice will be closed. We will now get started with the Texas A&M student-athletes. Please direct your questions to specific student-athletes. Uh, Robert Sessler, Bryan College Station Eagle. Kyla, can you talk about what's going to be some of the keys, you going up against Shepard, you guys, if you're not going to do man-to-man, just handling Shepard? What do you see as the keys? Uh, I mean, I've been, I've been watching film on her, and she's very fundamentally sound. She has great hands and great feet, so I'm going to have to have great feet to be able to defend her. Uh, I know she's very strong, so I can't let her muscle me down there on the block and do whatever she wants. So I'm going to try to uh, wear her out with that and try to, you know, take some run up and down the court a little bit, tie her down a bit. But I've been watching film on her, and she's a very, she's a very good post player, so I'm excited. I love to play. I love a challenge, so she's definitely going to be a challenge. She can drive the ball. She can shoot the high post. She's very strong. She can finish it under the rim, so I'm just really excited to play her. Matt Coper with TexAgs.com. Uh, Danny, after the, the comeback, come from behind win that you guys had, do you feel like you have some momentum going into this game against Notre Dame? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think we've been putting it together recently uh, towards the end of the season, and so we feel confident coming in, but we know that we can't get down 15 points to a team like Notre Dame and expect to have that comeback. we got to come out from the start ready to go. And Real, can you talk about getting this Sweet 16, being you guys are all upperclassmen, this is your first time. What about handling everything maybe off the court at such, you know, one more level than last week? Right. Um, for all of us, this is very meaningful um, to us because we haven't been here before since we've been here. So um, we're very honored and blessed to have this opportunity, but we're definitely handling our business off the court as well because um, even though we're out here, it's a business trip, you know, we got to take things – um, we got to take care of things first, so. And how are you guys as upperclassmen stepping up to help out with the younger girls, the freshmen, like Carter? How are you using your role as a leader to kind of help her in this big situation? Personally, I feel like she doesn't, you know, she doesn't, in a sense, need that mentorship. She's played in big games just like this, and so for her, I think it's just playing her game. But for the other people, I feel like, you know, we have to be telling them this is do or die. You know, we got to be mentally locked in and focused, ready to go at all times. Kyla, uh, Ryan McDonald from the Battalion Student Newspaper. Kyla, uh, Coach Blair was saying that one of the, if not, he said one of the biggest keys to the game was keeping you out of foul trouble despite what he expects to be a physical matchup tomorrow against Shepard. What's going to be the key to being physical and locking her down, but also staying out of foul trouble? Uh, one of the things that Coach Starkey teaches us on post defense is to meet the post up the lane. Uh, I saw a lot of clips when, when I watched the Villanova game of Villanova just letting Shepard go down there and just post up and turn around, shoot a layup. So I definitely want to make her work to get down there. And it's definitely going to be a, a feet game, a footwork game. So I can't just reach around her because that will be a foul. I have to move my feet. So I'm going to try to focus on that and practice today so I can, you know, transition into the game tomorrow. But it's definitely just going to be um, a feet game and just not letting her set up shop wherever she wants. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, you're in a stretch there for like eight or nine games where you're probably shooting the best you ever have at A&M. And that last game, one for ten, looked like you were getting your shots and they just weren't falling. Is that the way you saw last game? And why were you shooting so well the last eight or nine games? Like I said, maybe the best you've been since you've been here. I think I've just been relaxed, you know, doing whatever I can do to help our team win down the stretch. And I got the shots. I got good looks in DePaul, and they just didn't fall. But as a shooter, uh, you're going to go through that. And so I'm not really worried about, you know, thinking about that. I can't dwell about that. You know, we have a game tomorrow, and that's a new day and a new opportunity. Yeah, D. Savannah <laughs> Do you have any other questions for the student athletes? Uh, Danny, you've played uh, a ton of minutes this season. Uh, played the whole game last last game. Is there does that take a toll on your body this time of year, or is it? Have you had time to re regroup? I guess. 
it does take a toll, but we've had, you know, almost a week uh, to recover and get ready. And so you just got to, you know, be drinking a lot of water and you got to be prepared. You know, you can't take anything lightly. You got to stay on top of your recovery to be prepared for these type of games. All right. Thank you to the student athletes and good luck tomorrow. Thank, thank you. you. Shout out to my mom. Love you. Just one more reminder, the Texas A&M 90-minute practice will begin at 1.10. The court will be open to men members of the media for the first 15 minutes of practice, after which time the court will be cleared and practice will be closed. Our next news conference will feature Oregon and will begin at 2.05.